Well, so uh, Pakistan uh, has a very brief but uh, very interesting uh, story of uh, 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 negotiation with the Taliban and uh, making deals, uh, what we call the peace deal with the Taliban. Uh, uh, the story started uh, after 9-11 when uh, uh, hundred, uh, if not thousands, of uh, Al-Qaeda-linked militants, they slipped into the Pakistan tribal region and they took refuge uh, in the Fata region, uh, more specifically in the South Waziristan Belt. Uh, Pakistan started uh, military operations there uh, in 2002 and 3, and that was the first time when Pakistan Army went enter into the tribal region uh, after uh, the, the creation of Pakistan in 1947. Uh, they launched military operations there against the, what they called the foreign militants there, uh, which were supported by the local, uh, the local Taliban militants. And that time, uh, there was one local uh, Waziri Taliban commander. He was uh, from the uh, Wazir, uh, uh, Wazir tribe uh, in uh, South Waziristan region. His name was uh, Naik Muhammad Wazir. Uh, he uh, actually uh, that time led uh, the insurgency and he uh, uh, started uh, fighting with the Pakistani uh, forces there. So that's how uh, the story started there. I will uh, uh, briefly go to the peace deal which the Pakistani government made uh, in the Fata region and just briefly uh, which were made recently in Sawat, uh, which is not part of the Fata, which is part of the NWAP. So So this is the first uh, deal uh, which was signed, uh, uh, and its name was Shakai uh, Peace Deal. It was in April 2004. Uh, it was uh, signed uh, amid big funfair in a, a sprawling ground uh, of Shakai, some 20 miles from uh, Wana, uh, which is the headquarter of South Waziristan. Uh, thousands of tribesmen uh, attended the ceremony. Uh, that time I was a journalist in Peshawar. I myself was there. Uh, and uh, uh, it was between uh, the Pakistan Army and local Taliban commander Naik Muhammad Wazir, uh, who is considered as father of the Pakistani Taliban. Uh, Naik Muhammad, who was uh, 28 years old at that time, uh, and he was a trained uh, fighter uh, Afga uh, who, who fought uh, in, uh, during the Afghan Jihad. He was uh, there before 9-11, uh, and uh, 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 he, he told journalists uh, during, uh, after the peace deal that uh, he actually fought at Bagram and uh, those places. Yeah. So this is uh, Naik Muhammad Wazir. Uh, when Pakistan Army uh, launched uh, its military operation, the first one was uh, uh, done at Kalusha. Kalusha was a town uh, in South Waziristan on the border uh, with Afghanistan. Uh, after that uh, uh, first operation, they did uh, dozens of military operations, and they were not successful. And finally, uh, they approached uh, this uh, Taliban commander, and you see uh, he is sitting uh, with one of the Pakistan military officers. This uh, picture was taken just uh, a day or two days before the Shakya agreement in uh, April uh, 2004. And then... Uh, I don't know actually this <laughs> remote is, yeah. And then you see uh, one of the, uh, in the agreement, uh, one of the top Pakistani uh, journal, uh, Lieutenant General Sabdur Hussain, who was the core commander that time uh, at uh, Peshawar, uh, he went to uh, Waziristan and he was actually uh, the one who uh, signed the peace deal from the government of Pakistan. Uh, and he got landed uh, uh, the the uh, the uh, Naik Muhammad Wazir and his uh, uh, close and top uh, uh, militant commander there. And then uh, Naik Muhammad Wazir pledged that he will not fight with the Pakistani forces there. Uh, after the peace deal, uh, there was uh, jubilation. Uh, the tribesmen who were fed up with the two years fighting in the area, uh, they were dancing. Uh, traditional dancing was there. And uh, however, uh, soon uh, uh, the terms and condition of the, that uh, agreement was that uh, uh, Naik Muhammad Wazir and his five top militants will uh, uh, denounce militancy. Pakistan soil will not be used for any uh, terrorist activity by anybody. Uh, foreign militants have a right to live in an honorable manner, which meant either they have to live or register their names with the government and 
respecting the law and traditions. These were some other uh, 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 terms and condition of the uh, uh, Shakay Agreement that time. Uh, it fell just in few days. Uh, the main point of this uh, deal, uh, which became uh, the bone of contention, was the presence of foreign militants in the area. Uh, Pakistani government, uh, from the government side, the main demand was that the uh, Taliban militants, uh, the local militants, they shouldn't uh, give shelter and protect the foreign uh, militants in the area. Uh, however, uh, just uh, a day or two later of the Shakai agreement, <coughs> uh, Nate Muhammad Wazir, he was talking to the journalist in the uh, area and he uh, said that uh, this is not part of the deal and he actually said that uh, the foreign militants, they are their guests and whenever they come, uh, the local tribesmen, uh, they will give shelter to uh, the foreign militants there. <coughs> Uh, then uh, Naik Mohammad Wazir was killed uh, in a missile strike, uh, which uh, the Pakistani government <coughs> took credit for that. Uh, however, a local reporter and journalist said actually it was done by uh, the U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Uh, <coughs> then another uh, uh, agreement which uh, also became uh, very famous, that was the Sararoga Agreement, and it was uh, done with Betullah Masood. Uh, both uh, parties uh, in the agreement, the government and the militant agreed on these points uh, that army will uh, evacuate tribal territories, uh, the Taliban will not attack the army, foreign militants will not uh, get protection, uh, the army will uh, not conduct uh, operation against the Taliban if they agree to uh, completion of the uh, development work in the area. Uh, this is uh, Betullah Masood, who himself signed the peace deal at Sararoga. Sararoga uh, is a town in uh, uh, South Waziristan, and that's why it became Sararoga Peace Agreement. Uh, after the deal, uh, there was a relative peace uh, for a while. Uh, uh, but uh, Taliban, uh, uh, after the uh, peace deal, uh, local journalists uh, in the Waziristan region, they reported that the Taliban established their offices uh, in different parts of Waziristan, uh, started new recruitment drive, uh, implemented a very strict version of Sharia in the region. Uh, in fact, they converted uh, Waziristan like in a minister uh, Taliban state that time. Uh, harsh steps were uh, uh, taken against criminals and uh, other uh, uh, people. Uh, again, both sides uh, started uh, in the Shakai agreement when it was uh, terminated, so the government uh, accused uh, Taliban militants for violating uh, the deal. And similarly, this time again, both sides started accusing each other of violation of the peace deal. Uh, in September uh, 2006, uh, another peace deal was struck uh, the Pakistani, uh, by the Pakistani government with the Taliban militants, and it was with the tribal elders. Uh, the chief architect of this deal was uh, the then governor uh, of uh, Frontier Province, Ali uh, Jan Aurekzai, mm -hmm. and he called it a historic uh, moment when uh, the deal was signed. Uh, when the Red Mask operation started uh, in Pakistan uh, in 2007, uh, Taliban uh, announced end of the agreement uh, by uh, circulating statement in Waziristan, accusing government of establishing check post in the region. Uh, when uh, the, the Red Mask operation started in Islamabad, uh, in the capital of Pakistan, so Pakistan army uh, started uh, a kind of movement in Waziristan, and they established some, some of the check posts uh, which uh, they had, uh, uh, where, uh, where they had withdrawn some of their troops uh, as part of the deal in 2006. Uh, the Taliban militants accused government uh, saying it is violation of the deal and that's why they uh, uh, announced a termination of the deal. Uh, this is now the SWAT peace deal. Uh, actually, uh, in Waziristan, in those areas, uh, there were some 14, 15 deals uh, in different parts, uh, but the, 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 the one which I just mentioned, there are the main deals uh, between the Taliban militants and uh, the government. In Sawat, uh, it's, it's like the similar story. Uh, the first deal was uh, struck in May, uh, April, May 2007. 
uh, between the six parties uh, alliance, uh, religious alliance of Muttahida uh, Majlis Amal and TNSM, but it was in fact with uh, Maulana Fazlullah. And it happened uh, uh, because there were some concern uh, among the local people uh, 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 because of the FM broadcast by uh, Maulana Fazlullah. Uh, and when this concern reached to Islamabad and Peshawar, so that time uh, the religious alliance, the six parties religious alliance, uh, it was in power in Peshawar, and it started a kind of negotiation with uh, Fazlullah, and it said uh, actually they are dealing with the TNSM, uh, which is a moment which uh, Rodney uh, mentioned, it's uh, for the implementation of Sharia in the Sawat and Malakan region. Uh, it signed uh, a deal uh, there uh, 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 with the uh, TNSM and basically with uh, Maulana Fazlullah. Uh, that time there was uh, a commissioner uh, who uh, actually mediated the peace deal and that commissioner is nowadays, uh, he uh, he is under a very close, uh, I mean some people say he, he has already been arrested uh, because he is missing and he uh, is accused of having sympathies uh, with the Taliban uh, militants, uh, and particularly with Fazlullah and his group. So uh, this was, uh, and and the main point uh, in this uh, deal was because, like I mentioned, it was uh, uh, because of the FM broadcast by the Taliban uh, 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 cleric, Maulana Fazlullah. However, uh, as part of the deal, he was let to go with his uh, FM broadcast in the area. and. Uh, the, the, the uh, MMA uh, ministers in Peshawar, uh, they were telling uh, to the media people that actually he will be broadcasting, but he will not uh, talk about jihad and inciting people, which was not true. Actually, there was no content of uh, uh, controlling, uh, uh, the, 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 the control of contents of the Fazlullah uh, FM broadcast. Uh, during that uh, Sawad first deal, uh, Maulana Fazlullah agreed that to close down all training facilities for militants and uh, ministers uh, to support the polio vaccination. Actually, he was uh, opposing the polio vaccination uh, through by his uh, FM channels, and he was uh, telling to the people that it is uh, a conspiracy by the uh, by the West and particularly of the United States to uh, infertile uh, the male uh, segment of the society. So he, uh, during this agreement, he agreed that uh, he will support uh, the the polio vaccination drive. Uh, he also uh, uh, agreed to support the administration and uh, the law and order situation. And surprisingly, like I mentioned, government agreed to let Fazlullah uh, continue his FM broadcast. Uh, in 2007, November, uh, Pakistan army deployed troops. Uh, the, the central government actually deployed uh, uh, troops uh, in the Sawat region. Uh, and the, the provincial government of MMA called it the violation of peace deal between them and the TNSM, Fazlullah. A uh, military operation was launched against Fazlullah and the deal came to end. Uh, that was the time uh, when uh, uh, the then president, Parvez Musharraf, also imposed uh, the state of emergency and he uh, also cited uh, Sawat, the insurgency, the situation in Sawat as one of the reasons for imposing uh, uh, emergency in his uh, televised speech to the nation. Uh, then, uh, in 2008, uh, the new government came in the frontier province of uh, the secular Awami National Party, and it started new uh, peace initiative in the region. Uh, they appointed uh, the provincial president of the party, Afrasiyab Khatak, as a peace envoy. Uh, it was a new position uh, in the uh, uh, in the government uh, uh, machinery there. And uh, the, the first thing they did, they released uh, Sufi Muhammad, the TNSM leader, uh, who took uh, some close to 10,000 people to Afghanistan during uh, af uh, after the 9/11, and uh, he uh, led these people uh, to fight along Taliban against the U.S.-led uh, NATO forces there. Uh, when he was returning back, uh, he was arrested by the Pakistani authorities, and he was put behind the bars. Uh, his uh, views uh, 
are very strict, very harsh, and even he didn't try to approach the court because he believed the, Pakistan, the Pakistani courts and the judicial system, it is uh, not Islamic, and that's why he uh, thought it's futile to go and approach an un-Islamic court for his release. However, the ANP government started uh, this uh, peace uh, initiative, and the first thing they did, they released him, and they signed a kind of agreement with the TNSM, uh, which uh, which uh, the uh, Sufi Muhammad is, is leader. And then uh, th that agreement was again terminated after some time. And then we had uh, this uh, very uh, much talk about a a agreement in uh, February uh, this year uh, in which uh, the government uh, agreed uh, to some of the demands of the uh, uh, militants in the area. Sufi Muhammad was the main broker of this deal uh, in Sawat. And he... Uh, uh, he uh, mediated the deal uh, between the government and uh, the, the Taliban militants, which were led by his son-in-law, Maulana Fazlullah, uh, in the area. Uh, now, the main point from the, uh, from the government side was how to disarm uh, the Sawat militants. And uh, Maulana Sufi uh, Muhammad took this responsibility. He said he's going to ask the Taliban militants to, uh, to, to lay down their arms. And uh, that's, uh, but uh, even that time, uh, suspicion was raised that how uh, uh, Supi Muhammad can do this uh, job. Because uh, many people thought, like, uh, now he is more a symbolic leader. He doesn't have that much uh, uh, influence on the local uh, people. Uh, because the Sawat militants, uh, there were reports that there were many foreigners, uh, there were many criminals. They were just, I mean, it was a loose group. They were not like some local people where you can go and talk to them and can disarm them. So, and this is what happened, uh, the whole, uh, uh, because when they started the process, even the ANP government, which is so much secular uh, uh, in its ideology and uh, outlook, it went with this uh, deal. Uh, I remember uh, uh, in the past few years, whenever there was a deal with the militants in the Fata region, ANP was the first to oppose such thing. However, surprisingly, when they came into power, they were the first to start this uh, process of uh, negotiation with the, uh, the with the militants in the region. Uh, they realized that it is uh, a way to deal with the problem. Uh, when uh, they started this uh, negotiation process, there was so much uproar. And everywhere in Pakistan, the human rights activists, the civil society, and particularly here in Washington, D.C., I remember there was such a knee-jerk reaction and everybody. And uh, I mean, we saw on the street of Sawat, people were distributing sweets because for them, the most important thing was peace. Uh, for them, that was the thing, and they wanted peace either to the peace deal or whatever. However, when uh, Taliban started demanding more and more and the controversy arose when uh, they were appointing uh, the, the judges, the Qazis, uh, there. So the government said, OK, these are the people who are going to be the judges there. And uh, Supi Muhammad and the militants said, no, we have a certain criteria for the judges. He should be uh, having a certain length of uh, beard and uh, other things. So anyhow, that was the thing when uh, the, the deal uh, couldn't work, and the Pakistan army went there. And now we see uh, this uh, 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 military operation in Sawat. It has rendered some uh, 2.5 million uh, 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 refugees, uh, uh, internal displaced people uh, in their own country. And still, uh, Pakistan army is fighting there. Uh, they have cleared some areas there, and still they are there. So this is how the story uh, uh, of the peace deal uh, in Sawat and other area is. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, lesson learned from the deal uh, with Taliban. So they are uh, being uh, pursued uh, as a, I mean, the Pakistani government uh, during those time when they were signing this deal, they uh, thought like these are panacea for ending militancy on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, many people termed it like a sellout. These agreements have resulted in eviction uh, and the, the, uh, uh, for the foreign militants, and uh, there was relative peace in some areas. Uh, but none of them proved long-lasting. 
who is responsible for the breakdown of each successive agreement, the government, local militia, foreign militant, or some outside powers. Uh, some main lesson uh, causes of the failure. I mean, this is uh, my own, uh, 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 as a reporter, when I was covering these deals, and each time we were confused who is blaming who for these uh, deals. So these were the main uh, thing which I realized that firstly, rarely tribal elders or tribes were involved as they were mostly directly with the Taliban militants in the region. Terms and condition were never clearly specified in a simple language. And that's why there was no clear definition of violation. There was no penalty on violation. And all this was because there was no guarantor who could put pressure and levy financial penalty or other fines in case of violation. Uh, after, I mean, after seeing all these deals, uh, many times we were just discussing and uh, I mean, what the conclusion was for me, who is deceiving who? That was the conclusion for me because we never know who is deceiving who. I mean, the government said we are, uh, they are the violators, the, the militants said they are the violators, and the end is who is deceiving who. So that's how I can conclude my, yeah.